Okay, so we've said that f equals mg and little g is fixed on the surface of the Earth, which is saying that all objects should accelerate to the same rate on the surface of the Earth. So they should all fall together if we let go. Now, this is true for relatively heavy objects. If I drop these two balls, which are not identical, one's a rubber ball and one's a happy sack, if I drop them from the same height, we should see them hit the floor at about the same time. Okay, so let's try that. So they hit the floor at approximately the same time. But what happens when I drop a heavy object and something which is really light, like this leaf? You can see what I said before clearly isn't true. They're not hitting the floor at the same time. So what's going wrong with the physics in this case? Well, the answer is air resistance. We've got air all around us. Air is made up of little particles. And these little particles try and stop the motion of the objects through them. So air resistance actually provides another force. And this force works to oppose the pull of the gravity. Air resistance is more significant the lighter an object is. So air resistance affects this leaf a lot because the leaf has a large surface area and is very light, whereas this ball has a slightly smaller surface area and more mass. So the gravitational force is larger for the ball because the gravitational force is given by mg. The gravitational force is smaller for the leaf and so the air resistance is more significant for the leaf because one, it has more surface area and two, it has less gravitational force to overcome. So these do not hit the floor together. But what would happen if we could get rid of the air? What would happen if we dropped two objects on the moon where there is no atmosphere? Well, on the moon, the leaf and the ball would drop at the same rate. Now, don't take my word for this. We're going to do a demonstration now to prove that on the moon, the ball and the leaf would fall at the same rate. What we have here is a perspex tube from which we can remove all the air. You can see the patty case and the ceramic ball down the bottom. The patty case is very light and has a large surface area. The ceramic ball is heavy and has a small surface area. The air is removed by attaching a vacuum to this tube at the top. Okay, let's look at what happens to this cupcake patty case and the ball in a vacuum when we turn this tube the other way up. You can see that now that they're in the vacuum, they fall at approximately the same rate. We'll replay that in slow motion now so that you can see exactly what's going on. You can see the patty case and the ceramic ball hit the bottom of the tube at almost exactly the same time. Now what we'll do is we'll let the air in and see how that changes it. Okay, so now there's air in this tube. You can see now the patty case was a lot slower than the ball. And so around us, we've got air resistance. So F equals mg is correct, but it's only an approximation. In reality, things with a large surface area that don't have much mass are affected by air resistance. So F equals mg does hold, 
But on the surface of the Earth, we also need to sometimes consider air resistance. Air resistance is very important for objects with a large surface area and which don't have much mass. Now, one interesting thing which happens with air resistance is that everything feels a weight force downwards. So we've got an mg force downwards. Now, the size of the air resistance force is actually dependent upon the velocity of the object which is falling. So here we've got a cat falling from a high-rise apartment. It wasn't pushed, it fell by accident. It feels an air resistance force upwards. Now, when it starts going fast enough, this air resistance force is actually equal to the weight force. So at that point, when the air resistance is equal to the weight force, it stops accelerating, which means that this cat actually starts to fall at a constant velocity. So this velocity is called the terminal velocity of the cat. And no matter how long the cat falls for, its velocity won't get greater than this terminal velocity. So they actually did a study of all the cats that had fell, fallen out of their apartments in New York. And they found that the highest mortality rate for the cats was for cats which had fallen from the seventh floor. So the belief was that cats will reach their terminal velocity when they've fallen seven floors. If they fall from higher than that, then they fall for a greater time and the cat has more time to relax in the air and to get into a suitable position to land. So cats have actually survived falls from the 45th floor when they've landed in flower pit pots. But the 7th floor is the most dangerous as they get to their terminal velocity and they have less time to prepare to hit the ground. So velocity is just another word for speed, except that velocity has got a direction as well. We'll be looking at that in more detail in a later topic. But what we can actually draw here is a speed versus time graph for the falling cat. Now initially it's got a lot of acceleration, but the air resistance force increases as the speed increases, and so the speed of the cat looks something like this. And we've got it levels off here at this terminal velocity here. 